Hello and welcome. Today we are in the tier 10 French destroyer, the Marceau. She's still a work in progress and thus subject to change. She was given to me by Wargaming for review purposes. But actually first I'd like to mention that Citarella is running a tournament on the 23rd and 24th of February. That's about racing in a tier 5 destroyer. It's only on the EU server and uh, basically you'll be trying to be as fast as possible. There are rules posted and if you're interested in that there's a link in the description where you can sign up and read more about it. I think it's a really neat idea and I will definitely try to show up myself and take part in it. Anyway, back to the game. So, I've already made a video of the Marceau. She's basically a Clebea with Colbert guns. She doesn't have a reload booster, but she does have much better reload, so you don't really need it. However, her shells are slower and she does feel slightly less accurate, but on the other hand she does a better uh, anti-air, and she also has much faster torturers, so you don't actually need expert marksmen like you do on the uh, Clebea. So this time I'm playing in a way that you usually expect the club well, not usually expect the Clebet to play, but basically only Clebets play like this. Where I went full range, I have 16 kilometer range, and the plan is to simply shell enemy battleships and, you know, bigger cruisers from really far away and try not to get hit by them. And just be really annoying and a huge nuisance to them and uh, just continue doing that until they lose the will to live and just decide to scuttle their ships on their own. So, the Marceau, as I said, is essentially Kleber with better DPM. However, slower shells does mean that I would say overall you're in about the same or s very similar position as a Klebea would be. You know, slower shells means you hit fewer of them, so the fact that you have faster reload or more DPM doesn't really give you that big of an advantage. And you don't have access to reload booster. However, when you fight Shimakas at this kind of close range, in the long term, it can be quite nice. However, obviously, you don't actually fight destroyers in the long term. They simply don't have the HP, so again, it's more or less a wash. However, she is still just as fast as a Kleber, and this does mean you can dodge very well. Just check this out. Nope, can't touch this. Smolensk, nope. No, we're not getting hit today, Smolensk, okay? Don't even try it. And we easily dodged all of those. It was through pure skill, no luck involved at all. And now we're gonna take the end cap while we shell the North Carolina. Well, try to anyway. Sadly, there's an island in the way. We bounce off of this Friedrich der Grosse to turn around slightly, and uh, then we simply continue. Now, one thing I really like about the Marceau over the Kleber is uh, the fact that her turret traverses much faster. You don't need expert marksmen, and the turrets still turn quickly. It's just such a nice quality of life thing that I really, really enjoy. And I mean, it, it can absolutely matter in fights as well. It's just that with the build I'm playing right now at, at range, it really won't matter much. Whether you're a Kleber or a Marceau, it'll probably be more or less the same. Because you really don't need to turn your turrets that often. No! Oh. Hey, this is not, sir! Because apparently I cannot sail and avoid an iceberg, a little titanic cosplay over here. I guess I'll blame the ship's incredible speed on this one, okay? The ship was so fast it was impossible to avoid the iceberg. But actually, this is a fairly important point. You see, I am zoomed in so much on the ship that I'm actually thinking that maybe taking the IFA skill that is... Uh, the skill which tells you when somebody is firing at you could actually be quite useful. Because uh, if you're zoomed in so often, you might not know every time somebody fires at you. And, you know, sometimes you take an unlucky salvo and you take like 5k damage. And that can be quite an annoyance. So perhaps spending that one point on IFA might actually be worth it. That's something I haven't really, you know, 
I have played around with it a little bit, but I haven't really, you know, decided on whether that's actually a good or bad thing. It's surprisingly better than I initially anticipated, though. Initially, you know, I've been laughing at using IFA, how it's a bad skill, but, you know, maybe the skill has its uses. Man, being a battleship here would be quite frustrating, huh? You just keep getting shelled at by this destroyer that you don't seem to be able to deal any damage in return. Sure, the DD isn't doing much damage, I mean, I'm at only 23k damage. Even I, I don't even have much fire damage so far. However, they're not doing anything in return to me. And the longer this game goes, you know, I can later get closer to the enemy ships and trade some of the HP I have left to do, I don't know, more dangerous things for the enemy that is. Although I would say that in such situations you're probably better off in the uh, Klebba because Klebba's torpedoes are faster. You do get um, only 8km torpedo range compared to the 9km on the Marceau, however Marceau torpedoes are significantly slower. So right now I'm paying attention a lot to whether I'm locked on by, enemy, by an enemy ship because there is a North Carolina in front of me. And if I do get locked on, I'm gonna turn my camera around towards the North Carolina to see if she actually aims at me. But since the Puerto Rico went down, I guess we'll have to switch targets anyway. I'm getting a bit too close to this NC. If the NC decides to actually fire at me, I could be in trouble. It's not that hard to hit the DD at 9 kilometers. It doesn't really matter how fast she is, you can definitely hit her if you try hard enough. So this is why I'm turning away, and due to my fast turret traverse, I'm not going to be missing out uh, on my front turrets from not firing for too long. On the Klebe, you would definitely have a much bigger disadvantage here. But it does seem the North Carolina is not actually interested in trying to, uh, you know, do anything to us. Maybe she's already been demoralized and uh, just looks at the Marceau's essentially full HP and is like, yeah, I guess I won't be able to do much to her anyway. Let me just continue shelling something else instead. And uh, unfortunately for her, this means that I do get some nice fires on her and uh, those should be able to sink her. But I mean, look at the shells, right? They don't seem to be the most accurate. Like the shells do seem to be all over the place. We generally don't quite get this with the Klebe. So, we're gonna deal with the NC. Next up, we're gonna deal with, the, you know, probably start shelling the Alsace. I'm gonna continue sailing essentially in the direction I am. I do want to stay in the open water because uh, in the open water I can still, you know, maneuver and try to dodge and uh, won't be forced to do turns that can end up making me take a lot of damage. So now we'll round the island and then we'll continue shelling Galsas. One thing though, I should probably try to get slightly further away, or at least position myself so that I am putting some distance between me and the Alsace. I am fairly close and it's entirely possible for the Alsace to actually hit me. Luckily it seems the Alsace is turning away, which means that I wanted to say she can only fire her rear turrets, but no, she actually could fire one of the front turrets. However, she only did what? 2k damage? Yeah, we have another 23k there, and there's only 9 minutes and 30 seconds to go. And we should be able to deal quite a bit of damage in return to this Alsus, considering we actually do have a fire on her, I believe. Yeah, that should be a fire on her, by us at least. She's at 40k HP. Oh, and she decided to switch targets. Hmm, I wonder why. She has Damacon. But we'll, we will continue just shelling her over and over, and uh, hopefully we'll get another fire soon enough. At this point, it's the Alsace trying to disengage from us, but unfortunately for her, that is not possible for her to do. I mean, she's actually at 37k HP now. However, now I finally got the fire, and I do believe her heal has run out, so she should be starting to rapidly lose HP. Oh, and another fire. Hmm. She does fire on me, but I do slow down and turn in, which makes it a very difficult shot for her to hit. 
fires another one, but dispersion probably won't deal too much damage to me. Yeah, none at all. And she is down to 15k HP with still fires ongoing, so... She's probably going to go down very, very soon. She might get the Namekon off, but even then she's gonna be so low HP I don't think it matters and uh, <laughs> it seems he is quite uh, mad in chat. I would be quite annoyed too if I were that Alsas. And now we're gonna go chase that Tepets. Meanwhile we will go for the Sea Cap. I mean he's not wrong in chat. I would say that characterization of the ship, especially the way I'm playing her, is quite accurate here. Now Marceau does have decent anti-air, which is unfortunately not, actually no, it's fortunately not in play in this match because there are no CVs. If there was a CV I probably would have to play somewhat differently in my positioning, however, the long range setup on a destroyer is actually one of the best ones to be as, again, in a CV battle because you can end up being next to your friendly cruisers and battleships and... Uh, that will essentially give you cover. It's actually 3 versus 4, so we haven't even won this game yet. And I mean, we have a cruiser and two destroyers. They have a cruiser, two battleships, and a destroyer. So if they can somehow take control of the capsums, this could go pretty poorly for us in the long term, but I think we have enough time for me to be able to burn down some of their ships. I think as a Klebe, I would actually be slightly better off or I would be slightly less worried about this match because as a Klebea it's much easier to just YOLO into the enemy team and then or enemy battleship and try to torpedo to sink her. As this ship it's slightly more difficult but I think it shouldn't matter too much. We should still win this fairly easy well not fairly easily but it should be winnable. Hmm Tepet seems to be coming maybe I should torpedo her. Our Alaska, which is our only big ship left, is actually engaging the Tepets. And I mean, if enough time goes by, I actually do think the Tepets should win this fight. However, our Alaska is smart, she is uh, sailing away or reversing away, and this should give the opportunity for my torpedoes to do something. And uh, yeah, I guess the Tepets is gonna find out in a moment that the uh, Marceau still does have torpedoes. That by Tepets. And now we just continue shelling the Alaska. I actually do think that the uh, comparison to the Colbert is kind of interesting. Despite the fact that one is a destroyer and the other is a cruiser, I would actually probably take the Marceau over the Colbert in most matches. Because the Marceau can actually put those turrets to good use without dying very very quickly and she also has torpedoes in close range encounters. So since they only have a destroyer which is a Shimakaza and an Alaska left I decide to just YOLO rush this Alaska. I want to see how the guns work at close range because I've only been firing HE so far. I do want to find out what AP can do. You know, AP on Klebet is actually pretty damn good, but on the Marceau it's much less so. I mean, yes, it's still nice and all, but because it's essentially Colbert AP, it does not appear to be nearly as effective as uh, Klebet's AP is. But the torpedoes will finish off the Alaska, and then it's just the Shumakaza left. And since we have such an overwhelming points advantage, I guess the Arshimakaze here decides that the that the capstone isn't actually important, so I'm just gonna follow the Shima as well. Cause uh, maybe we can sink that fifth ship for a nice crack and unleashed. Except it's a test ship, so we can't actually get any uh, any of the medals. Unfortunately, or not unfortunately. Right now, the important point is to try to not get torpedoed by the Shima. Especially as a Marceau or any fast ship, if you're heading towards torpedoes, it's actually quite easy to end up in a situation where you sail into the torpedoes yourself. And that is definitely something to consider, but luckily here this time it worked out fine, and we did actually sink the Shimakaza. So actually one tip, when you know roughly where the torps can come from, you want to go slightly diagonally, that way you can turn 
you know, to try to avoid the torpedoes because you have movement in uh, in a different uh, axis compared to where the torps are coming from. So we actually ended up doing 222k damage, only 12 fires, but 596 shell hits, 334 pens and 260 non-pens. I mean, in that sense, it doesn't matter whether it, you're a Clebet or a Marceau. However, that's a damn lot of shell hits. And I do think that I probably would have done less damage in a Clebet, but probably not by too much. You could play the Clebet basically in the exact same way as I played the Marceau here. And hopefully you wouldn't run into an island. Twenty three hundred and seventy six basic me. I am quite satisfied with that. The enemy Shima did try hard. Thirteen hundred base XP on a loss is pretty damn good. And I'm gonna compliment the uh, Alaska that's still alive because he definitely played well there against that Tuppets, and I do think that deserves a compliment. Five torpedo hits for forty four k damage. As you can see, the torp damage is not the greatest. I mean, it's not even ten k per torpedo on average, right? And here's the Alsace that got mad. I mean, I can understand it. 61k damage just like that from some HE spam and fires. It's frustrating to play against it, but I guess that's kind of what your teammates are for, right? You're supposed to be in a position where if a destroyer engages you like that, your teammates can punish that destroyer because it's entirely possible for a, for a destroyer to dodge shells from a single ship. However, if there are m multiple ships firing at that destroyer, it gets much more difficult. Or another thing you can do is you can fire shell, you can fire your turrets one at a time. So you fire one turret, then you wait a few seconds, you fire your second turret, then you wait a few seconds, and then you fire your third turret. Because then, while well, the first uh, turret probably will miss because the destroyer can dodge, the second and third turrets will be locked on during the turn that the destroyer is doing to try to dodge and those turrets should have a much higher chance of actually hitting the DD. Sure, you're not gonna deal massive damage, but, you know, you'll chip away at the DD over time, and if other ships pitch in, it'll work out fine. So, yeah, I would say that this was a fairly fun Marceau game for me, and honestly, playing this game actually made me want to play the Clebert more. The ships just are similar enough that I think, uh... Even though you might think the Marceau is quite better in quite a few aspects, I would say overall it's more or less the same. It shouldn't impact the game balance too much, so in that sense I don't really mind the Marceau being added more or less as she is. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Pluto. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.